Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Throw, and on this edition it's Balloon Fight, brought to us by Nintendo. Balloon Fight, another one of the black box classic NES titles, was released in 1986 in North America and 1985 in Japan, with an arcade versus system of the version coming out in Japan in 1985 as well. Featuring gameplay similar to the classic arcade game Joust, Balloon Fight has you controlling the Balloon Fighter, trying to pop the balloons on other enemies, while also popping their balloons, taking them out, and avoiding the giant fish at the bottom of the screen. So here we go with Balloon Fight for the NES. There's three different modes to Balloon Fight. One player, two player, which is actually simultaneous gameplay, and the Balloon Trip mode. Balloon Trip mode is a survival-like mode, where you're trying to last as long as possible and trying to get the highest score as you can. The one player game, which is what I'm playing here, has you competing through endless amounts of phases or levels, popping the balloons of all the different enemies you run across. There's 12 different unique phases as well as 5 different bonus games to complete while completing the different phases. Like Joust, your goal is to take out the other enemies by running into them. In Balloon Fight, just like Joust, you want to be slightly above the enemy when you run into them so you can pop the balloon. If the enemy is above you when you make contact, they end up popping one of your balloons. You have two balloons on your character and when they both pop, you end up losing a life. You can also lose a life by going too close to the bottom of the screen, and a giant fish will pop out of the water and end up eating you. The main goal of the game, like many other classic NES early titles, is about getting point score. Your goal is to collect as many points as absolutely possible, and there's many different ways to do that. Each unique way that you can take out the different enemies popping their balloons and then hitting them to get them off screen, changes up how many points you end up getting. Every three phases, there's a bonus level, where you'll have these four pipes lined up on the bottom of the screen, each launching up balloons. Your goal is to pop as many of the balloons as possible. The more balloons you pop, the higher point bonus score you get at the end of the bonus level. For example, here I pop 17 balloons at 300 points apiece. Like I was saying, there's many different ways to take out the enemies. Your goal is to hit each enemy really twice, to hit them once to pop their balloon, and then again once they've landed on the ground. However, if they're in the air when you pop their balloon, they start floating down with a parachute. Running into the parachute will instantly take them out before they're able to land back on the ground. This gives you more points. You can also take out enemies before they're able to even get the balloon inflated at the beginning of a level. If an enemy is able to get their balloon reinflated once they've landed safely on a platform after popping their initial balloon, they can get another balloon going, and thus you can actually end up getting more points. Enemies can also get taken out, just like here, by the giant fish at the bottom of the screen if they float too low to the water as well. Of course, by the fish grabbing them instead of you taking them out, you don't get any points for this, but it's another way for enemies to go out. So there you have your basics for Balloon Fight. You may have noticed that some enemies do have different colored balloons, and this changes them up just slightly, but nothing really too big. You also have to watch out though for background lightning bolts that can appear from clouds on certain phases. While Balloon Fight may not be as memorable as other classic NES titles like Mario or The Legend of Zelda, it does actually have a pretty interesting history. The music for the game was composed by classic NES composer Hirokazu Tanaka, who worked on many other classic NES titles, including Tetris, Famicom Wars, Kid Icarus, and Metroid. Besides Tanaka, another man who helped create the Metroid and Kid Icarus series was Yoshio Sakamoto, who was the designer for this game. And besides them, Satoru Iwata, who is the current head of Nintendo, was one of the programmers on the game that really helped put the game's mainframe together. And Nintendo likes to keep Balloon Fighter relevant by re-releasing it on various virtual consoles over the years, including also releasing Game Boy Advance versions of the game, having it included as one of the playable games in Animal Crossing, and even revamping the game a little bit to add it to the Legend of Zelda series, replacing the main Balloon Fighter with Tingle for Tingle's Balloon Fight. Most recently, the game was even included as one of the many mini-games in the Nintendo Land game that was released for, of course, the Nintendo Wii U. 
And the Balloon Fighter was not only a trophy in Super Smash Bros., but he actually was also supposed to originally be a playable character in Super Smash Bros. Melee, but was replaced by the Ice Climbers later in development. That's also why you may notice if you actually play Super Smash Bros. Melee, there's one of the alternate musics for the Ice Climber stage is, well, Balloon Fight. And even with all the many re-releases of Balloon Fight, there actually was a sequel to the game. It was called Balloon Kid. It was only released in North America and Europe, not Japan, but it actually was changed up a bit and actually put on the Famicom after it was licensed by another company and made into a Hello Kitty game called Hello Kitty World. Balloon Kid changed up the main character, changing the character actually to a female character named Alice, and had the game about saving her brother. And while we may never actually see another real sequel or game in the Balloon Fight series, I have a high suspicion that Nintendo is going to keep the Balloon Fighter character or at least pieces of Balloon Fighter around. Heck, we've already seen the Animal Crossing Villager character in the new Super Smash Bros. 4 coming out, that he actually has a hat that he can put on that, well, has balloons on it, similar to the Balloon Fighter. After all that, I'm currently in phase number 10 in the game. Trust me, not much really changes as far as gameplay as you go out, but you are introduced to the flippers throughout the game. Those familiar with Super Smash Bros. will recognize the flippers, and they do the exact same thing they did there by, well, flipping you around, sending you flying in different various directions, so you have to be careful of them, so you don't end up getting thrown right into the path of an oncoming enemy that could possibly pop one of your balloons. It can be really tricky sometimes getting to areas where the flipper is actually blocking, but I'm able to land my final hit on this enemy and move on to the final phase of the game, phase number 12. From this point on, after completing the bonus level, I will end up losing my lives, but I'll go back to the main menu and actually complete the balloon trip mode. Well, at least get the high score in balloon trip mode. And a nice fitting way to end the 12 phases of Balloon Fighter by having the last enemy end up being grabbed by the giant fish. After grabbing 16 balloons in the final bonus level, it's now time to go back to the main menu and check out the Balloon Trip Mode. Balloon Trip Mode, like I mentioned earlier, is kind of an endless mode. You're on a scrolling area and you're actually traveling from right to left, which is a little bit different than, of course, a lot of classic NES titles. And in this mode, your goal is, well, to stay alive. Keep floating in the air, watching out for all the electrical sparks, don't get too low to the water so the fish ends up grabbing you, and grab all the balloons and pop them for big points. In the upper right corner, you have a ranking, which shows you what rank you currently are, I guess, on the high score table, though unfortunately, they don't actually show you the high score table. Your main goal, though, is to set as high a score as absolutely possible. But for this gameplay, I'm just going to be getting up to the 25,000 point score, and once I have rank number one, I'll end up ending the game. In this mode, the electrical sparks can move in various different directions and can be rather tricky at times to actually navigate in and out of them. You also have bubbles that come out of the water that gave you normally points in the one or two player mode of the game. However, in this mode, they end up freezing the screen for a few seconds. You can still die during this part, so you have to be very careful that even when the screen freezes, that you don't go too far down to the bottom or run into one of the electrical sparks. While the other mode is kind of the main meat and potatoes of the game, the balloon trip mode has always been my personal favorite, spending many hours trying to get as high of a score as I possibly could on it. I always just love the physics of the game, being able to just float there and then holding in the button to try to fly up higher and moving around as the balloon fighter just seemed seamless. 
Of course, the game was originally created with swimming in mind, and I think that's one of the reasons why the game is just so fluent. And it's definitely still a lot of fun to play and try to get through to see how high of a score you can get. As I get closer and closer to that rank number one, I'm just reflecting on just how many of the Black Box Classic NES titles are the ones that you probably recognize easily if you're an NES fan, with the sprite work being actually on the main cover. Just how many of those games are still fun to play even though they were pretty simple and basic. Games such as Donkey Kong, Excitebike, Balloon Fight, Urban Champion, and of course one of my absolute personal favorites, Pro Wrestling. Heck, that series of gaming also includes the two Rob the Robot games, Gyromite and Stack Up. Right now, after this last little bit, grabbing the last few balloons, I'll be able to rank up to rank number one, getting over 25,000 points, and complete my balloon trip journey. After losing the life there, game over, you go back to the screen, you can start the game all over again, either playing the single player, two player mode, or of course, the balloon trip mode. Either way, guys, it's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.